this is as a certain feature no video questions to see how best you can help you achieve your process please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel u.s border crisis breaking news Texas brings in more razor wire to Shelby Park by the truckload. State of Texas is adding more razor wire and fencing to a border park in Eagle Pass. A Fox drone capturing truckloads of new fencing arriving in Shelby Park in Eagle Pass. Nearly every day, Texas is fortifying its razor wire barrier on the property while defying the Biden administration's demands to allow Border Patrol agents back in. Texas is no longer allowing migrants to freely cross into the park where last month up to 4,000 a day were entering. Around sunrise today, migrants illegally crossed and climbed onto Texas's cargo container wall. Texas National Guard ordered them back to Mexico. The migrants did not comply and Texas DPS arrested them for criminal trespass. At the edge of the park, the Rio Grande River is dramatically rising. Texas is pulling its massive cargo containers away from the water, which Texas DPS warns is potentially lethal for migrants to cross right now. Also on the southern border to the west in Hakumba, California, Fox was there as SUVs dropped off dozens of migrants who illegally breezed right through a border wall. A U.S. Customs and Border Protection source tells Fox News there were more than 1,300 Border Patrol apprehensions in the San Diego sector yesterday alone. 1,100 were single adults, with more than 160 from China and 120 from Vietnam. The San Diego sector has seen more than 100 Chinese nationals each day over the past... Texas National Guard seizes park on Rio Grande. Are they letting you guys in? I was going to do a quick patrol, I don't know. Who's in See what they say. The answer to these United States Border Patrol agents was no, because they turned around from Shelby Park in Eagle Pass, Texas, now occupied by the state's National Guard and the Department of Public Safety. Federal law states that U.S. Border Patrol has jurisdiction anywhere, public or private, up to 25 miles inland from an international boundary. Are you serious? They said you can't go in. No, but it's fine. No, worries. no, it's not. Maverick County Democratic Party Chair Juanita Martinez says the scene shows the dysfunction between Texas's governor and the federal government. I said, safety from what? All this is, is just a political stunt by Abbott to make people scared. And oh my gosh, why? Because the Republicans don't have anything else to run on. Armed guards and state police occupy the park, which Republican Governor Greg Abbott says is necessary to enforce the state's own border security program called Operation Lone Star, which has already cost Texas taxpayers billions of dollars. This is all happening as Senate negotiators in Washington are working on a bipartisan bill that would significantly restrict illegal crossings on the southern border, but is in jeopardy as House Republicans are saying they won't vote for that legislation because they think it's not strong enough. Presidential candidate Donald Trump is badmouthing it, even though it delivers things his previous administration asked for, like increased executive authority to shut down a border. It's uh, demoralizing. You know, we could have a united front. We could have the federal and the state working together jointly. We could be having and strengthening our relationships with our biggest trading partner in Mexico. Local state representative Eddie Morales says Eagle Pass needs federal lawmakers to compromise. And so the message should be clear to Congress. Do your job. It's been over 30 years that we have a failed immigration system, and it's time for them to do their job, especially if they talk that much about it and complain that much about it and have made it their number one issue. The convoys of truckers from across the U.S. are headed to the border city of Eagle Pass in a show of solidarity. They're standing by Texas efforts to secure the southern border from unprecedented illegal immigration. And as we've reported, Texas leadership, including Governor Abbott, finds himself right now in a standoff with the federal government over jurisdiction and enforcement efforts. The truckers and the convoys say the Biden administration, administration hasn't done enough to solve the problem, and they plan to rally in Eagle Pass this weekend. Video posted by the group online shows some of the big rigs already on the road. Now the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, is issuing a national alert warning those in the convoy may bring violence directed at immigrant communities with them, something advocates of the convoy vehemently denied. It is ridiculous hyperbole. That is projection on to uh, conservatives uh, by the progressive left. Uh, we saw BLM and Antifa burning cities several summers ago. 
Uh, that's protection known to us. This will be a peaceful rally. In fact, Lexit, which is the Latino exit from the Democrat Party, will be participating uh, in this convoy and this rally. Uh, Lexit is the largest Latino move, conservative movement in the nation. They're going to be there. But we know that more armed and many of them have extremist uh, views, uh, especially in terms of uh, a lot of the fear mongering and scapegoating, uh, especially of immigrants and Hispanics. And we want to make sure that that we uh, are people, uh, Texas. Turn now to the battle at the border this morning. The Take Our Border Back convoy says it will drive from Virginia Beach to Eagle Pass this weekend. According to a release from the group, the trucks will branch off to hold rallies across Arizona, California, and Texas. The convoy comes at a time when Texas lawmakers and the Biden administration continue to battle over razor wire along the Rio Grande. The Biden administration accuses Texas of interfering with federal enforcement of immigration law. Do they need to be here? They don't have enough Border Patrol people anyway. We got it covered. Mr. President, Mr. President, you say you want to secure the border. Texas has secured it. Leave it alone. We don't need you down here. The Biden administration gave the state until last Friday to relinquish control of federal land it seized near the southern border. And earlier this month, the Supreme Court ordered the state to take down the razor wire. But Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says Texas will defy the Supreme Court order and continue to put up razor wire at the border. Both Patrick and Governor Greg Abbott have claimed the state's authority to protect its border superseded federal law to justify their actions. It's no secret the problem on the border is real, but there appears to be little appetite to actually do something about it. A Republican-led committee hearing in Congress started with the position that the Biden administration has failed to secure the border. That partisan tone dominated the debate over Governor Abbott's standoff with the White House on razor wire and other deterrents. We have the right to defend ourselves. It is inherent. The Constitution reflects that, and it reflects the fact that governors and states can, should, step in if the federal government refuses to do its job. The committee, chaired by Texas Republican Chip Roy, Brent Webster is the first assistant attorney general of Texas. He was one of the four people who was invited to testify. At no point is Texas contesting the right of any party to avail themselves of a legal port of entry. What's at issue is the invasion that occurs in the other locations that are not ports of entry. Those locations between ports of entry are the flashpoints in this dispute. The Supreme Court appearing to side with the federal government's authority by ruling that federal border agents can cut down razor wire installed by DPS and the Texas National Guard. Governor Abbott said the state will continue to install razor wire under his declaration that Texas is being invaded, with Democrats on the committee challenging that authority. So why is this hearing happening today? To try to breathe life into a crackpot legal theory that is so extreme that even hardcore conservative scholars have rejected it declaring correctly that this is an attempt to subvert our constitutional order for political purposes. Democrats also challenged Webster on Governor Abbott's policy of busing and flying asylum seekers to self-declared sanctuary cities in other states. I do know that uh, the mayor of New York has, has expressed concerns about how many are arriving in his city. So because you there. Either, either Governor DeSantis or your governor have sent to put them on airplanes and sent them to New York buses, airplanes, whatever, and send them to Chicago and send them to Denver. This won't be the last congressional debate over the border. Those who are working on a bipartisan stopgap are hoping there won't be political interference because it's an election year. Trump says that will be Donald Trump. He says that Democrats are, quote, using this horrific Senate bill as a way of being able to put the border disaster onto the shoulders of the Republicans, end quote. Congressman Tony Gonzalez, Republican from Texas, joins me now. Congressman, uh, what do we need here, legislation or executive orders? Oh, uh, thank you for having me on, Stu. Uh, what we need is we need a president that enforces the laws. That's that simple. And oh, by the way, President Trump didn't have a border bill passed through Congress. Neither did Obama, Bush, or Clinton. So this can, this can all be alle alleviated today. We need the president to enforce the laws that are on the books. You know, if, he, if he, we're talking funding, I sit on the Appropriations Committee. If you need more money for ICE flights to deport people, I'm all in. 
If you need more money for technology that prevents fentanyl to come in uh, our country, I'm all in. But if you're asking for more money to just uh, release more people into our country illegally, I'm all out. How do you see this playing out? Because the president is not likely to take executive action, and the, 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 the Congress is not likely to get the kind of border bill that you would like. So play it out. What happens? You know, Stu, I think now more than ever, more Americans are impacted by this border crisis. And it's not just my district along the border. It's all across America. Somebody has a story where someone died of fentanyl uh, or where these migrants are coming and overwhelming communities. Communities, you know, we're talking about Denver today and we're talking about Chicago, but it's going to be Pittsburgh and Boston. This thing's going to continue to spread. So what, what can happen? I look at it through the lens of we need help today. What are some border security measures that can alleviate some of the stress today? That's the deportations. That's surging immigration judges to the border, and you get your case heard in days, not years, just like every other president has done. Congressman Gonzalez, thank you very much for joining us, sir. We always appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I hope you guys found this video extremely helpful. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, definitely make sure to share this video with them. We are all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that can benefit from this video, the more people we want watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs icon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates. Bye!